How's it going, boys, girls, and squirrels, and welcome back to Avatar The Last Airbender. Things are looking up for the gang. Zuko is no longer alone. Toph has been officially inducted into the team. Things are good. Things are looking great. And we got another great, uh, great pair of episodes, kind of. The episode we're about to look at, perfectly fine episode. Aang learns earthbending. Zuko learns lightning bending. It's gonna be a good time. The episode after that, not so much. Who's ready for that to suck? And if you don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> strap in. Sorry, Snoozles. We'll do our earthbending as quietly as we can. Toph, you gotta stop shoving rocks up people's asses! This is just such a cruel way of dealing with people you find mildly annoying. Or right, you're gonna prank Sokka into an early grave. Toph, please, I just wanna sleep. Oh! Oh! Oh, I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Oh, my legs! Oh, maybe I can learn to make a whirlpool out of land. Let's start with move a rock. I like that Toph is actually a good teacher. Toph seems like the kind of immature and impatient person to totally just throw Aang into the deep end of earthbending. And she does kind of do that, like, in this episode, but it is cool to see her be like, how about we start with you moving a rock before I teach you, like, weapons of mass destruction? Okay, you ready to give it a try? I'm ready. Holy shit, the rock bent him! Rock beats airbender. Oh my god, it threw Aang so hard it knocked him into another man's flashback. Aang's gonna regain consciousness and be like, Did I just... Did I just make up a backstory for Iroh? I feel like this confirms that one of Aang's past lives was Iroh's son. If you think about it, if you really think about it, Aang just got knocked into being Iroh's son just now. So, you know, we, we gotta do a little mental gymnastics here, but I think we could make that theory work. My beloved Lieutenant, I will see you again. Do you think people choose to visit graves on rainy days, or is it just a coincidence? People in movies are always visiting the dead when it's raining. Like, reschedule. You think your son never canceled an outdoor activity because it was raining? Or was he just showing up to the zoo soaking wet like, I made this plan, I gotta stick with it! I think he'll understand if you come on a day when your shoes aren't squishing with every step. You know, it's not like he's going anywhere. I know what you're gonna say. She's my sister and I should be trying to get along with her. No. She's crazy and she needs to go down. She burned my nipple off, Zuko. Somebody's gotta teach this girl a lesson. He did it exactly the way you did. Maybe there's another way. What if I came at the boulder from a different angle? No, that's the problem. You've got to stop thinking like an airbender. You know what's cool about this? This scene is explaining that bending different elements doesn't just require, like, learning different forms of martial arts, but it requires understanding different ideologies as well. Waterbending means being calm and fluid. Airbending means being quick and adaptable. And yeah, there, like, are exceptions to this. Like, it's not like the Divergent series where every nation unanimously thinks like each other. But each bending style is indicative of how each culture, each nation thinks. So learning how to bend all four of the elements means more than just learning how to fight in four different styles. So in learning to master the four elements, an avatar is actively learning about the different cultural ideologies of the four nations, and therefore becoming a better arbiter of them. It's just cool that, like, mastering the elements isn't just mastering fighting. It isn't just being, being the best cop in the world. It's understanding how each of the four nations think, and therefore understanding more than anybody else how to solve their conflicts. I've seen people talk about this before and be like, why does she need eye holes if she can't see? And it is entirely possible that this is an oversight. Zing. But it's also just as possible that the eye holes are for intimidation. You know, like this shot doesn't work if Aang's just staring at a pile of rocks. Gotcha! Are we sure Sokka didn't earthbend his way into this situation? How can the ground be soft enough that he sinks into it, but hard enough that he can't get out? Like, this is earthbending. Oh, lightning, the cold-blooded fire. 
It is precise and deadly, like Azula. To perform the technique requires peace of mind. Look at Zuko pretending not to be the most hyped he's ever been in his entire life. Zuko woke up today and found out that he was gonna learn how to shoot lightning out of his hands. You'd have to put me on Xanax to keep me from bouncing off the walls after hearing that. The technique requires peace of mind. I see. That's why we're drinking tea. To calm the mind. Oh yeah, good point. I love that. I love Iroh being like, Oh yeah, I guess so. <laughs> oh, that's funny. There is energy all around us. The energy is both yin and yang. Positive energy and negative energy. It's crazy how this world has literal yin and yang, and then also two fish that metaphorically represent them. Like, I wonder what the implication behind that is, you know? Also, way more natural introduction into Eastern philosophy than Boomy's nonsense explanation of Jing. <laughs> I'm ready to try it. Yeah, see, there's that hype. Zuko saw Iroh do it once, and he's like, I've mastered it, I'm ready to go, give me a shot! Alright, we'll give him a break, it's literally his first time. You would think Iroh of all people would be a patient teacher. Actually, there is a better way. This way, you'll really have to sense the vibrations of the boulder to stop it. Thank you, Katara. Yeah, thanks, Katara. Bitch, if you open your mouth one more fucking time... You blew it! You had a perfect stance and perfect form, but when it came right down to it, you didn't have the guts! I know. I'm sorry. Ugh, Aang is like the most annoying person to yell at. You're pathetic! You should feel sorry for yourself! I know. I'm sorry. Ugh. Well, don't actually be sorry! Now I feel bad! Ugh. Why can't I do it? Instead of lightning, it keeps exploding in my face! like everything always does. Oh yeah, you're gonna cry now? You're gonna cry because you can't shoot lightning out of your hands, you little fire baby? I was afraid this might happen. You will not be able to master lightning until you have dealt with the turmoil inside you. What turmoil? I am completely at peace! You know this block you're having is only temporary, right? I don't wanna talk about it. You do realize that's the problem, don't you? This is like the best training. You and a girl you like doing some Tai Chi in a river and getting real with each other? You kidding me? This is like the indie soft boy dream. And on top of all that, you're also learning how to do magic. You're working with your natural opposite, but you'll figure it out. I know you will. Think fast! Ah, ah, why? The people of the Fire Nation have desire and will, and the energy and drive to achieve what they want. Earth is the element of substance. This is such a satisfying scene to watch. It's so rare in this show that we get to see like an actual adult teaching someone something because the main cast is all children. But hearing Iroh break down the cultural ideologies of the four nations feels like you're taking the most engaging college course. Worldly concerns and found peace and freedom. Also, they apparently had pretty good senses of humor. What reaction were you hoping for, Iroh? In what world does what you just said get a laugh? It's not like you told an air nomad joke. Also, it's like, apparently they had pretty good senses of humor. Uncle, we killed them all. Oh yeah, I guess we did do that. And the other nations will help you become whole. All this four elements talk is sounding like Avatar stuff. I love watching Zuko have his supremacist ideology broken down in real time. I also like how he isn't necessarily, like, combative. Like, he's clearly willing to learn, even though this is, like, Avatar stuff. Like, his tone, that delivery was really good. He wasn't like, get, get this treasonous speak out of here. He was like, but wait, I thought, I, I thought, like, merging with the other elements was bad. Like, that's what I've grown up learning. Or if you didn't, that's an antique handcrafted by the monks. It's a delicate instrument. It's not the only delicate instrument around here. Damn, Momo switched sides real easily. Yeah, yeah, Aang's a real bitch, huh? Hey, hey, keep the nuts coming. I could use a little earth bending here. How about it? I can't. You could try. If you can't earth bend me out of here, go get Toph. I can't do that either. You can't? Why not? It would just be really... 
uncomfortable. Sokka, I'm sorry, but you're just going to have to die. It's okay, it's okay, you don't have to say it. I will gladly accept your boomerang. Aw, what a cute name for a little baby saber-toothed moose lion cub. Really? He looks nothing like a saber-toothed moose lion. It's hard to tell before their giant teeth and horns grow in. Did Aang, like, take a course on animals in the Air Nomad temples or something? Aang knows so much about animals, but seemingly spent most of his 11 years on Earth in a giant honeycomb in the sky. Buddy, it is called the Sea of Chi. Only in my case, it is more like a vast ocean. <laughs> Iroh, quit testing out material. Zuko is not the audience for it. You may wish to try a physical motion to get a feel for the pathway's flow, like this. They put so much fucking thought into this one technique. I like how you don't have to do this motion to redirect lightning, it's just like, a visual representation to help beginners. But like, even that's so cool. I love how they came up with a beginner's version of this move. I think so. Come on, you've got to feel the flow. Iroh was going nuts being stuck alone with Zuko for so long. This is what happens when you have a social butterfly forced to travel with a moody teen. He's just so desperate for other human contact, and Zuko is not giving it to him. Excellent, you've got it. Great, I'm ready to try with real lightning. What, are you crazy? Lightning is very dangerous. You know, Zuko doesn't have to master lightning bending all in one day. Zuko and Iroh gave up after one hour of teaching him lightning bending. And now Iroh's like, okay, cool, you've mastered redirecting it. Like, train him over the course of a few weeks before you pass or fail him. Please don't leave me again. I won't. This is like genuinely a perfect ending to this episode. The universe really does Aang a solid here by cooking up this crazy scenario to indirectly teach him earthbending. You've always thrown everything you could at me. Well, I can take it, and now I can give it back! Who is this silly little speech for? God? Is he shouting at God? A god who nobody in this show has ever mentioned or referred to before? Or is Zuko just constantly getting struck by lightning and he's just sick of it? Like he's actually just yelling at the clouds and this whole speech is meant to be taken literally? Brief episode transition, if you like what you're seeing here and you want to get a ton of more content not found anywhere else, make sure you consider subscribing to my Patreon, where you get access to an exclusive reaction video each month. Right now I'm reacting to food. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Right now I'm reacting to Blue Lock. Right now I'm reacting to Blue Lock, and you also get access to all my Food Wars reactions I've done in the past. God, I am hungry. You also get access to my private Discord server, where you can chat with me and a bunch of other members of this wonderful little community we've built. On top of that, you also get access to every live stream recording I've done in the past and will do in the future. If any of that sounds exciting to you, make sure you check out the link to my Patreon in the description below. It really helps out the page a ton and ensures that I can keep putting out content as frequently as I do. On to our next one. <laughs> Unfortunately. This is great and all, but don't we have more important things to worry about? Bold of Sokka to try and block the mouth hole of an airbender. Aang was one slightly more aggressive blow away from wind blasting all the skin off of Sokka's finger just then. Vacations. There's no time for vacations. I'm learning the elements as fast as I can. I practice hard every day with Toph and Katara. I've been training my arrow off. I've been training my fucking arrow off, Sokka. I just want to play the flute with some goddamn gophers. Can I do that? Can I please do that for five minutes? How many elements have you mastered? Hey, Ponytail? Huh? Let's see you bend. Knock, knock. Hello, Fire Lord? Anybody home? I don't think so. We need some intelligence if we're gonna win this war. <laughs> Sokka just grabs Aang like, Listen to me, you bold little freak! I like how they're in this, like, barren desert wasteland and this dude's still busting his ass off for tips. You know this bartender loves his job. Excuse me. <gasps> no worries. I clean up easy. Aang, you ran into him. You should be worried about whether or not this dude wants to kick your ass. Imagine bumping into some dude at a Mad Max bar like this and being like, Oh, don't worry. 
I'm fine. The Southern Temple. Oh, splendid. Now tell me, what was the primary agricultural product of your people? Oh god, it's never good when you see someone start whipping out the phrenology kit. If you ever see a scientist start whipping out one of those head measuring claws, not a good scientist. Look up phrenology if you're interested in why. Do you have a more current map? Ours seems to be a little dated. Certainly. What, no Fire Nation? There's something really cool about the fact that nobody has a current map of the Fire Nation. Like, what a cool small detail that just adds to the hostility the Fire Nation has with the rest of the world. It's priceless. Mmm, sounds like good times. Oh, it is. Are there cups made out of ice? Are they drinking out of ice cups right now? In the middle of a desert? Who here needs an explanation on why that's the worst drink idea in the entire world? Imagine the stress that comes from trying to eat an ice cream cone before it drips all over you, but now the cone is melting too. That's like drinking a saw trap. Like if you don't finish in time, you become the drink. Tong, with the help of his foxy knowledge seekers. Oh, so this spirit has attractive assistants, huh? I think he means they look like actual foxes, Sokka. Actually, I'm a furry, so it's really a sort of double entendre, if you will. I think he means they look like actual foxes, Sokka. You're both right. Handsome little creatures. Oh my god, I was right! He is a furry! If this place has books from all over the world, do you think they've got info on the Fire Nation? A map, maybe? It's pretty hardcore that Sokka's looking for a map of the Fire Nation. Because really think about what that's implying. Sokka's like, we need to know exactly where the Fire Lord is so we can sneak into his palace and, uh... And you know... See our Sky Bison. A Sky Bison? You actually have one? Sandbenders, shoo! Away from the bison! And kill him. Kill him before it's too late. I know I've been telling you to kill a lot of people lately, but like, just trust me on this one. Oh, delightful! Oh, I only wish I spoke his tongue. Oh, the stories this beast could tell. <laughs> Shush, chatty monkey. No, that's the right attitude to have towards Appa and Momo. Even the show knows that Momo's the worst of the two. There it is! That's what it will sound like when one of you spots it. Everybody on this bison's holding back the urge to be real mean right now. Forget it. It's obviously not what we're looking for. The building in this drawing is enormous. Ooh, who is this foxy little guy? Is what I'm sure the professor's thinking right now. What kind of animal is that? What kind of animal is that? Katara was the one who suggested they were actual foxes. How do you not know what a fox is? Is it because you live in the South Pole? Because in that case, why does Katara know what a fox is? My point is, both of you should have the same information. And it's huge. That fox thing he went in through a window. I say we climb up there and give it a look. I say you guys go ahead without me. You've got something against libraries? Why is Katara always ready to throw down? Look at her, she's like, Oh, here we go, let's see what this bitch has to say. I gotta tell you, they don't exactly do it for me. Oh, right. Sorry. Let me know if they have something you can listen to. God, imagine if I was sponsored by Audible right now. That was the perfect integration, right there. And I'm wasting it. Ugh. You know what? You know what? Fuck it. Today's video isn't sponsored by Audible. For just $15 a month, you get access to one free audiobook of your choosing and countless other discounts. Do you want to get more into books but are too slow of a reader or don't have enough time in your schedule to allocate to reading? Well, Audible is a great service for, and that's my time. Sorry, Audible, your free trial of my promotion is up, but if you'd like to pay me, I will shill so hard for Audible. I love audiobooks so much. So, if you want the second half of your ad, Audible, better email me. Everybody email Audible right now. Stop the video. I don't even care if you come back and finish it. Tell them Danny Mata deserves your sponsorship. Email them. DM them. I don't care. <sighs> what show am I watching again? Oh, it's breathtaking. The spirit spared no expense in designing this place. Look at those beautiful buttresses. <laughs> What's funny? Classy stuff happening right now. Real highbrow humor going on here. Oh, what, you think I'm being sarcastic? I love a good buttress joke. 
almost as much as I love the wonderful selection of audiobooks on I know you're back there. This guy's awesome. I love that a terrifying giant owl guards this library. Like, what a weird, cool addition. A head of anthropology at Ba Sing Se University. You should leave the way you came. Unless you want to become a stuffed head of anthropology. Okay, but who's stuffing those heads? What, does this guy have his foxes running a little taxidermy station in the back of his library? Are you the spirit who brought this library to the physical world? Indeed. I am one Shi Tong, he who knows 10,000 things. Yes, that's me, he who knows 10,000 things, who's asking? Putting a hard number on the amount of things you know is so funny to me. Regardless of how big that number is, you are always going to come away looking stupid. Because I don't know how many things the average person knows. Maybe 10,000 isn't that much. You're telling me your average Jeopardy player doesn't know at least 10,000 things? Humans only bother learning things to get the edge on other humans. Like that firebender who came to this place a few years ago, looking to destroy his enemy. Oh, holy shit, is that Zhao? Whoa, what a crazy callback. Is that how he knew about the moon spirits? That's sick, I love that. That's so dope, I had no idea that Zhao like, had any connection past season one to this show. So, who are you trying to destroy? What? No, 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 no destroying. We're not into that. Well, it's actually funny you mentioned the Fire Kingdom. Um, knowledge for knowledge's sake? If you're going to lie to an all-knowing spirit being, you should at least put some effort into it. All-knowing's a bit of a stretch, Mr. I know exactly 10,000 things. Please accept this tome as a donation to your library. First edition. Very nice. I like that Wan Chi Tong just has a bunch of shit hiding under his wings. Like he's a Brooklyn thief trying to sell you watches. He's like the bubble bass of the Avatar world. I have an authentic waterbending scroll. Oh, these illustrations are quite stylish. I like that he doesn't want it for the knowledge, he just thinks the drawings are pretty. Library. Bright enough to fool you. The owl just flies back up like, what was that? So, you like flying? Of course, I'm more comfortable on the ground where I can see. I like that Appa's genuinely listening. Turns out they beat us here a long time ago. I need to know what happened on the darkest day. <laughs> Hello, little wee. I remember distinctly getting so nervous when I saw this fox watching them as a kid. I remember being like, he's a snitch, he's a snitch, Aang suck his air out! Sokka, try entering that date from that parchment you took. Shh, Katara! Not in front of the fox, he's with the owl. You're a little late to not trust the fox, Sokka. Where were you when I suggested Aang suffocate him? Great, you must have broken it. It's not broken. The sun is behind the moon, it's a solar eclipse! This is such a cool way to find out this information. It's like the coolest exposition room in the, in, in the history of media. Ever abuse it again. He's sinking the building, we've gotta get out of here! I'm afraid I can't allow that. You already know too much. This was a scene that taught every child that owls have a cute mode and a scary mode. Have you ever seen an owl extend its neck and go all horizontal before? It's fucking terrifying. Also, I feel like this show needs an episode going over like... I, I, it, like, it's kind of fucked that Aang's the reason this library of, like, beautiful knowledge gets sunk. You know, I feel like we need an episode of Aang just kind of feeling bad about that. But instead, uh, we're about to get an episode of Aang feeling bad about something much, much different. Library's sinking! Library sinking! Ah! Ugh. Ugh. And thus begins the most stressful sequence in cartoon history. This is the fucking worst part of the entire series. This is like so too much. I like can't believe they would they would put us all through what's about to happen. Don't make me put this down. Ah! Truly the 
worst sequence of events are transpiring right now? Why would they ever put somebody in this situation? I'm not even talking about Toph having to choose between saving Appa or Aang. I'm talking about me having to watch it. Aisha's in trouble now. Where's Appa? Oh, stop, stop, stop. What a horrible way to end an episode. What a fucking, like, sadistic show. And this isn't even the most sadistic episode related to this event. This show's about to get real fucked out of nowhere. Like, truly unwarranted amounts of fucked. That being said, um, you know, whatever. Fucking my usual praises. Uh, the episode where everyone's learning to bend that's great it's very cool seeing all these different teachers teaching their own respective element in different ways it's cool to see the library it is like i've never thought about this before but it is kind of fucked that ang like destroys the library of alexandria and like n like never talks about it like doesn't feel very bad i get that we have a new trauma to like overshadow that but still in the grand scheme of like Avatar is fucking up the world. This is for sure on the list. But as always, let me know what you guys thought of this episode in the comments below. Let me know uh, what your favorite jokes of the video were, and I will see you guys next time.